We are interested in inflammatory liver disease and we have a particular interest in immune mediated liver disease, in particular autoimmune hepatitis and the other immune mediated, probably autoimmune diseases like primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. The European Union is starting a new program on networks for rare and complex diseases and uh, this is in order to improve the care of patients with rare and complex diseases and hopefully it will also be the basis for research on these diseases. The background is that these rare diseases have the problem that most doctors don't really know them. So most patients don't receive expert care. And this is a particular problem, of course, in certain areas of the European Union. Due to legal reasons, every patient in the European Union should really have access to the same quality of care. But the reality is different. And the European Union wants that patients don't necessarily have to move to a center of excellence but in the long run, center of excellence should be accessible close to the patient. There are very many rare diseases and quite a few rare liver diseases. Altogether, we believe there are something like 8,000 rare diseases. And that is a question of definition, how many of these are liver diseases? So, for example, there are the genetic metabolic diseases like lysosomal storage diseases, phenylketonuria, which are enzyme defects that are located in the liver, but the liver is not really sick. In ESL, we primarily focus on the diseases that cause a sick liver, um, and these fall really in three different categories. These could be immune-mediated and autoimmune liver diseases. Uh, and then we have the more structural liver diseases like polycystic liver disease and uh, genetic um, changes in the biliary tree, for example. <clears throat> and uh, finally, we have the third group um, of the metabolic diseases. Within the structural diseases, we would uh, classify also the neoplastic diseases, so the rare liver tumors. We know that liver cancer is a common disease, but we also have rare liver tumors, starting with cholangiocarcinoma as the most common of the rare ones, and then very rare ones. One of the characteristics of rare diseases is that we don't really have good epidemiology. So we don't really know how many patients suffer from these diseases. For some of these entities, we do have uh, good guesses. Um, like the autoimmune liver diseases, we know that about 1 in 10,000 or up to 1 in 5,000 of uh, European citizens probably suffers from a, a rare di autoimmune liver disease. And we do have some data on the rare cancers, um, but we have very little data on the other rare diseases. And one of the characteristics of the rare diseases is often not diagnosed. These are very different for the very different diseases. So. In, in some of them, like autoimmune hepatitis, for many decades already we've had very good treatment which is uh, improving still and most of the patients can have normal life expectancy and a good quality of life if they are cared for in an expert center. <clears throat> Other diseases like primary sclerosing cholangitis and also polycystic disease, we really only have liver transplant as a definitive treatment. Um, and similarly in the pediatric population, biliary atresia, we have surgery early on and alternatively then liver transplant. Most of Europe just has 
single centers that focus usually just on a smaller group of these rare liver diseases. France has moved ahead and actually has developed a national program for rare liver diseases. And in the United Kingdom, there have been two national programs now on PVC and on autoimmune hepatitis, uh, which are primarily research initiatives, but they also tend to improve clinical care as well. The problem of rare disease is that you will never have enough expertise spread all over. So uh, you need to develop training, um, but you also need to have access for patients. And finally, you need uh, adequate financing, because caring for patients with rare diseases, you will never be as efficient if you, as if you care for common diseases like coronary heart disease or diabetes and so on, where you can do, develop large clinics with efficient processes. So the financing for these rare diseases has to be better. Um, and that should already start at the diagnostic step. Actually picking up such a patient is a very important medical achievement and there should be a, a bonus for a center to diagnose these diseases and then allow specialized care. We are very optimistic that the rare liver initiative uh, that we are putting together and that David Jones from Newcastle is primarily coordinating will really be a forum that will improve both clinical care and clinical research for these rare liver diseases. So I think by 2030 we will have a European network really working. Having lived in Britain for four years of my life, I believe in the common sense of the British people and I believe they will be, remain in the European Union. If not, they can still co collaborate in the way that, for example, Norway, that is also not a member of the European Union, is still collaborating in these initiatives. I think a very hot topic is the interaction between the gut and the liver, we are learning that this is sort of one organ complex and that all those bacteria that live there interact very closely with the immune system, with the metabolic system and that works both ways because the liver is secreting bile into the gut and also changing the microbiome in, in uh, this fashion. So I believe a lot of uh, results will come out of this and there are very lively discussions on this issue. The liver meetings are an excellent forum for exchange. I'm looking forward to meeting other colleagues and discussing their results. But it's also the personal community and knowing people whom you can ask delicate questions, both clinically and scientifically.